So, welcome to the red couch here from PCM Nuremberg. Spontaneously, just 40 minutes ago, we decided to do this interview. So, forgive us if something's going wrong this time. We never did this on such short notice, but I'm pretty sure we will do it anyway. I will talk to Oliver Opitz, division manager from World Electronic ISOs, about wireless power challenges. Mr. Opitz, thank you very much for joining us this spontaneously. And yeah, wireless power. What are the main applications for this technology? Okay, thanks. First of all, I am um, for having me here. And what are, what are the main applications for wireless power? Well, the question is, what what can we use um, wireless power for? I guess most of the people know the very old application, which is the toothbrush. So the technology is around since a while. Typical applications for us are in the industrial and medical sector, so especially harsh environments. So actually every application where you can get rid of the connector, can get rid of the wire, you know, safety applications. So I guess a lot of people, they do not know by today where they can really use wireless power because they still think in their streamline, they, they're still in their comfort zone. And that's what we recognize here, the PCAM show, especially while talking to customers, that most of the customers, they are working on their application, like could be a, a light stand on their desk or something like this, and they say, oh, you know, there's no reason for us really using wireless power, but then if you start talking with them a little bit and show them the advantages of wireless power, they really come to the point and say, hey, actually, we never thought about this, and we could actually use wireless power as a more added value for, for our application. Mm -hmm. So, and what are the main challenges, despite the fact that you have to tell the people what they can use it for? <laughs> so, the technology, uh, technological challenges you're facing. Um, the, the challenges, I mean, we are in limits or in, you know, in brackets, we should say, we are just a coil supplier. And the challenge for us is today to, on one side, to follow some standards, to bring the right coils, to bring coils which are compliant to some standards. On the other side, we, we have to find a way that, even if we are transmitting power, that we do not radiate too much power in the environment and that we actually, yeah, kind of put, have some mm, pollution of the environment with energy. And our challenge by today is to make, of course, thin coils, small coils for if we go into consumer applications. If we look more into medical industrial applications, for us imp is important the, the ferrite material. On the transmitter side, it's more or less about the thickness, about the right attenuation of the field. And on the receiver side, it's more or less to, to come up with a flexible ferrite because you have not only a straight and nice shape of the cover, sometimes you have bended covers where you have to place the coil in there and you have to find a solution that the coil is flexible, but you do not damage the, the ferrite in this case. Mm -hmm. So our challenge is really on the design of the coil by today. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a, a little bit more about technology. So what are the power levels today in, in um, wireless power and what, uh, about what distance the power can be transmitted? The power level is actually, yeah, don't want to say a funny question, but today we talk about 5 watt, which is standardized. I'm pretty sure there are a couple of customers out there who already use higher power levels, but then more or less on a pro priority solution. So it already can go up to 100 watts or, I mean, there is there is a solution for car charging. It means that we talk about tens of kilowatts, 10, 15, 20 kilowatts. But for us today, interesting is the power level of, let's say, 5, 10, 15 watts to replace the, the regular, the standard wall charger for cell phones, tablets, things like this. This is where the, the standard is right now. Um, second question was? Um, the distance the power the can be transmitted. The distance. Yeah. Um, there, there are different solutions. There is a loosely coupled solution where you can transmit up to 40 millimeters. Um, there's, a, there's a technology from the wireless power consortium where you can transmit up to 10 millimeters. But we have to consider that we are just in the beginning of finding out the, 
yeah, the best way, the, the highest efficiency of this technology. So I'm pretty sure in future we can transmit bigger distances than just 10, 20, 30 millimeters. I mean, this is what we are looking for. It's, it's called spatial freedom. I want to put my device somewhere on the table. I want to I wanna use the technology in a kind of a wider, wider range. So summarize, really, the distance by today is 10, 20, 30 millimeters. But in the future, the distance has to grow. Otherwise, the technology will not survive the market. Mm -hmm. You were already mentioning standards a few times so far. So what about standards for a wireless power? Are there any standards so far? <laughs> Yeah, there are a couple of standards. There is the wireless power. A couple power. of standards. <laughs> yeah, really, really a couple of standards. Makes it a little bit difficult for yeah. the customers at the end. You know, there are even some questions out there. Is there a war between the standards? And we can somehow compare this with the past when Wi-Fi was coming out or Bluetooth or mm -hmm. other standards. Here we have the wireless power consortium, which is representing the G standard with more than 170 members already. We have A4WP, which was founded by Qualcomm and Samsung. The number of members is growing as well. Then we have PMA, Power Matter Alliance. We have Whitricity. There are a couple of startup, startup companies out there as well who found their own standard. The question for the customers at the end, which standard should I use? Mm -hmm. This is quite difficult to, to, answer, this or to, yeah, to answer this question. At the end, it comes down to what you're looking for in your application. You're looking for only a price-sensitive solution. You're looking for high efficiency. You're looking for a technology which is kind of um, already standardized in the market. And here, our strength is really the cheese standard by today because of the number of members, the, the members itself. That means we get a broad range of companies who are in there. and. But on the other side, we don't want to limit it for ourselves. As I said, we are a coil supplier. We don't provide the, the chipset. We don't provide the whole solution. For us, it's important to provide the customer at the end with the right coil for the right standard, what he wants to use. So you're, you're supporting different standards? We are supporting different standards. We are a member of the Wireless Power Consortium, the G standard, as well as we are a member of A4WP. We got great talks at the mobile conference in Barcelona with Qualcomm and Samsung. Yeah, of course, now if we talk about Samsung, the question sh could come up, what is Apple doing? <laughs> Honestly, nobody knows what Apple is doing. As, as always. As always. <laughs> there, you know, Apple filed a patent on wireless power. So I'm pretty sure they do something. But to get to know what Apple is doing, I guess we will see once they're coming out with a device. Mm -hmm. um, so you were just saying you're just bring the coils into mm. wire, uh, wireless power. So why do you invest in wireless power? But you, you could sell your coils for other applications as well. Why, why is it wireless power for you? <laughs> wireless power is, you know, as I said, the technology is around since about 20 years already for the toothbrush. Mm. I mean, Tesla found this you know, transmitting energy via air or via the magnetic, magnetic field already 100 years ago. For us, it's important to support our customers. Whatever the technology is, wireless power is a growing technology. We, we don't have this chicken egg problem anymore, like we maybe have with NFC. That means the technology is in the market. And we see the business in behind. Of course, this is what it comes down to. And it's a little bit difficult right now for our customers in the small and medium size area, because they are not aware of the technology. It's driven by consumer. And that's why we work together with other companies to be in the market from the beginning. And wireless power, we are now working on it since more than two years. So we want to offer solutions, not only the coil, as we support them with more with connectors, um, power inductors, power elements, PCBs as well. So we want to, at the end, offer the customer a solution, which is called wireless power. Mm -hmm. That's why on the one side I say, yes, it's just the coil. But in the end, if I see the whole Worth Electronics group, we support the customer with the whole solution. Mm -hmm. So wireless power is a technology which is future driven, and that's why we are in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but why your products and not products from other companies? Where, where do your products stand out in this field? 
Okay, now it's a usual thing coming up. You're a German company, and <laughs> a German company tries always to stand out with quality. Mm -hmm. And in this, yeah, this fact, we really can say quality in, in two topics. One side is really electrical performance, which means if you have a look at the coil, the Q value, we offer the products with the highest Q value, um, value available. Now, of course, somebody could come out and say, you're supporting the G standard. The G standard defines the transmitting coil in the standard. You have to use a Litz wire with a certain American wire gauge. You have to use a certain ferret material. So how can you differentiate in this area? I mean, Litz wire is not like Litz wire. You know, I always try to compare it with the chocolate cookies are not the same chocolate cookies. So my grandma makes different chocolate cookies than I do. and. The same as with Litzwire. We have great partnerships like with Electrizolar and Pacific Wire. And we always try to find something special to, f to come out with, in this case, the highest Q value. The higher the Q value, the higher is the, or the bigger is the distance you can transmit the energy. And especially on the receiver side, competition is providing very thin coils with a high DC resistance which is suitable in some cases, yes, but not for our customers. As I said, we are not consumer driven. We are working in a small, medium sized area. We have to find solutions where we can provide the customer the highest efficiency. And that's why our receiver coil is made out of Litz wire as well, to get a high Q value, get a low DC resistance, meaning AC resistance, so that our customer can transmit the power maybe even further than 40 millimeters and even with a better efficiency than just 90%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have any partnerships in the area of wireless power? Companies you're working with together very closely? Yeah, of course. And, and you know, in new technologies, you would not be able to survive or to run your own thing if you wouldn't have any partnerships. Mm -hmm. We're working very close together with Texas Instruments, IDT, a couple of other semiconductor manufacturers as well. As we are a member of Wireless Power Consortium and A4WP, we talk to a lot of different companies, but especially the partnership with Texas Instruments. We really have to say it's a, it's a giving and taking. TI is not able to do anything without, without the coil, and we are not able to do anything without TI without the chipset. So it's, we, are, we are really involved from the beginning. We mostly know six months before the tech new, maybe a revision or the new technology is coming mm. out, what do we have to work on? And it's not only to be, to, you know, to make a marketing on, hey, we are running new technologies. As we are really focusing on standard components, we want to offer to our customers, once again, the small, medium-sized customers, that if they get a chipset from TI or from IDT, that they can order the coil from stock. So for us, it's really important to be in the market as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So finally, you already mentioned the technology isn't really new, mm -hmm. but maybe it's a technology for new solutions. So where do you see the future of wireless power within the next, let's say, three to five years? The future is really driven by power. As I said before, today we are talking about 5, 10, 15 watts. We have to increase the power level. Increasing the power level brings a couple of yeah, headache visits meaning the radiation of the power. So I'm pretty sure there will be a couple of people who will strike or fight against wireless power. But for us, it's important to increase the power level. Today, we're talking about um, smartphones, tablets, maybe headsets, so really consumer driven. We are looking into applications like the kitchen application, meaning that you can use your, your um, water cooker or your, your pan or your toaster, you know, you, you just can take it out of the drawer, put it on the, on the table, and you can use it wirelessly. Mm. So you don't always have to, to connect or to plug, the, to plug into the wall outlet. It's, it's a safety reason for us. We have to increase safety, meaning you get rid of the wire and of the connector, safety reasons as well as for toys, so that we can hermetically seal some components and can make the environment even a little bit better for for the safety reasons. So higher power levels as well as getting rid of wires and um, connectors to save the environment on the other side with raw materials. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the Red Couch talk about wireless power challenges.
Mr. Opitz, thank you very much for joining us spontaneously. Thank and thank you everybody for watching and listening. And uh, we will we wish you a success, successful trade show. And you can watch this video and all the others later on on our um, Publish Industries YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Thank you.